going on guys? Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. In today's quick video, I'm gonna talk all about co-washing. Yeah. The whole purpose of co-washing is to keep your hair as moisturized as possible. So for people with dry, textured hair, they have found that washing their hair with a conditioner or co-wash just keeps their hair more moisturized, softer, more manageable, helps with their curl definition, and when they use shampoo, it dries their hair out. So let's talk about co-washing with a regular conditioner. Um, you could use a conditioner like this, or like this, or like this. Basically, any silicone-free conditioner. It's really hard for me to recommend one because everybody's hair is so different, and it is going to take you a little bit of trial and error. Um, when you wash your hair or co-wash your hair with a regular conditioner, just realize that there is no surfactant in it. So you are only using water, and friction to clean your hair. So the friction is coming from your fingertips um, and then the warm water is going to run through your hair and help to remove any like dirt or build up or anything off of your hair. That being said, you have to be really careful that you don't use any products that have ingredients in them that aren't water soluble. The other thing that you have to be really careful about is that you make sure that you rinse all of that co-wash or conditioner from your scalp after using it. So for this process, I do apply the conditioner right through my hair. I know what you guys are probably thinking, like if you don't need any special ingredients to clean your hair, why don't you use just water? Um, the answer to that is super simple. If I tried to wash my hair right now just using water and my fingertips, it would be absolutely insanely tangled and it would be impossible to do. So the conditioner is really just to apply slip and to help to start the detangling process so that you can like get the water all the way through your hair, run your fingertips all over your scalp and really get that friction going um, and clean all of your hair. Um, but then you really have to make sure that you rinse it super well. And like my general rule of thumb is that I rinse the conditioner that I use for the co-wash, I rinse it and rinse it until my hair has pretty much no slip and is almost starting to feel a little bit tangly again. Co-washing with a specifically formulated co-wash is a little bit different because there are going to be some cleansing agents in that co-wash. And so for some of you um, who maybe don't have like a super dry scalp like I have, for some of you, you might find this a little bit better if your scalp produces more oil, if your hair is a little bit dirtier, um, just from like pollutants or if you exercise a lot, which I do and I don't have a problem, but I'm just saying, if you find your hair is just a little bit oilier than mine, your scalp is a little bit oilier than mine, and you just need a little something, something extra, um, then you can use a specifically formulated co-wash. I just found through experience that these didn't work as well for me um, as a regular conditioner for a multiple reasons depending on the type of co-wash. So I've used like, you know, the Diva Curl No Poo, the As I Am um, Coconut Co-wash. There's one by B Curly, uh, the Aveda line, sorry, the Aveda B Curly line, I should say, they make a co-wash. That one was probably my favorite of the three, but it was really, really expensive. You can also use apple cider vinegar as a co-wash. You can try a lot of different things. It's just going to take you a little bit of trial and error. But again, like I said, if you try the conditioner washing like I was recommending and you're just like, oh, I just don't feel like my scalp and hair is cleansed enough for my liking, um, then maybe try a specifically formulated co-wash. The other thing that you need to consider is the health of your scalp. So it doesn't matter how shiny your hair looks for a couple of days if you are just not rinsing that conditioner from your scalp and you're getting a buildup on your scalp and you know you're not paying attention to the ingredients in your products and you're getting wax and silicone buildup on your scalp and your scalp just starts suffering. If your scalp is itchy, irritated, if you have like a flaky buildup that's a lot more than just dry skin, um, then you really need to try to scrub your scalp really well and rinse it really well. And if that still isn't working for you, then co-washing might not be for you, and that is totally fine. You may need to use a sulfate-free or a regular shampoo more often and just deep condition your hair more often, and that may keep your hair moisturized. 
Um, but again, the co-washing is what has really worked for me for a really long time. Whether you co-wash your hair with a conditioner or you co-wash your hair with a co-wash, after you're finished the process of washing your hair, um, you need to rinse that out thoroughly and then condition your hair like you normally would. So it's still two steps. It's still like a washing and conditioning step. The only change is that what you're using to wash your hair is not shampoo. So I do shampoo my hair. I do shampoo my hair with a sulfate-free shampoo primarily, and every once in a while, like once every few months, I wash my hair with a shampoo that has sulfate in it, and I use that to sort of clarify my hair. There are these like telltale signs that I need to wash my hair. There's like three of them, and I'm gonna go over it with those now, and these are like three things to look out for. The main thing that I want to get across is that if you're going to be following like the curly girl method or a method where you're doing something a little bit different than, you know, the recommended shampooing and conditioning, you want to pay a little bit more attention, attention to your hair and your scalp because there is more potential to get build up in your hair or for your scalp to react poorly um, to these types of methods when you're not washing your hair. And that just has to do with you know, the pH of your scalp and um, some different factors. But anyway, the three signs that I get that it's time to wash my hair um, with shampoo, whether it's sulfate-free shampoo or a sulfate shampoo. Number one, my hair looks really weighed down. It almost looks like dull and it's not curling and I have no volume. So then I'm like, oh, something's building up on my hair. The other sign is that my hair looks super dry. Um, and you're probably thinking, like, if you're only washing your hair with conditioner, um, why would your hair look super dry? And how would shampooing, you know, solve that problem? And the answer basically is that sometimes when you get a buildup on either your scalp or your hair, your hair just can't absorb moisture the way it normally would. And so your products, instead of allowing water to like, or helping the water to penetrate the hair strands and stay within the hair strands to give you that moisturized look, um, everything just kind of sits on the top of your hair and um, you just never get that, you know, like juicy moisturized look to your hair. So when that happens, I just assume that there's a buildup on my hair and my hair is not able to absorb what I want it to absorb. And so often I will wash my hair with a sulfate shampoo. Um, the third thing that happens every once in a while is sometimes I will get a buildup on my scalp. And I can tell you right now that I can't tell you with 100% certainty, but I'm going to just take a guess and say that that happens when I start co-washing my hair in a rush. I'm only doing it as a one-step process, so I'm really guilty for that. I just basically get in the shower and restyle my hair. So I get in the shower, I soak my hair, I put all the conditioner on my hair, I scrunch it into my hair, and then I like kind of quickly run my fingertips on my scalp. I rinse it out, um, probably not all the way, and then I apply my products. I'm, I'm scrunching my products up into my hair and it's landing on my scalp. I'm just getting too much on my scalp. I'm not being thorough. I'm not rinsing my scalp really well and I do get a buildup and sometimes I will get like a flaky or itchy scalp. And if that happens, I will shampoo my hair um, with a sulfate-free shampoo or a sulfate shampoo. The only thing you wanna be careful about is that sometimes you'll get flakes and you'll get an itchy scalp because you have dry scalp. So it's not a buildup. It's just regular dry scalp, and so further washing your hair with shampoo is just going to make things worse. I don't have enough time to explain that in this video, so I'm going to link a video up here where I talk about like the difference between buildup and dry scalp and maybe other problems like um, dandruff and things like that. Since we're talking about curly hair and that, i got to show off my gift that I got. So this is a curly Christmas cactus, and I just think it's like so beautiful and so unique. Um, this was a gift that was sent to me by the lady that makes those shampoo bars that I really love. So I'm going to leave their information across the screen here and I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. 
if you have any experience with co-washing with either conditioner or co-wash or if you've made your own co-wash using like apple cider vinegar if you have anything cool that you want to add or share or anything you want me to try please leave it in the comments section below subscribe to my channel and i will see you very soon in my next video bye